Now, as we start on these lessons, uh, these aren't included in our Math 100 course. And I do have a blackboard, whiteboard uh, presentation on this. But this will be a little more thorough since it's all printed out for us and you can follow along in your little booklet. Okay, so looking at our key words here, intersection. Whenever we come along in mathematics, and they're talking about this type of thing, and they use the word and. That is indicative of intersection. And the symbol for it is this upside down U. The key word is union. Again, the word for union, as we think of it in math, is the word or. And it combines things. Here it's only where they intersect. Here you're combining everything. Union. The word is or. And to give you a little thumbs up of what this looks like, a compound inequality is where, let's say, you have the x and then something on this side and something on this side. And we did mention that in Math 100. So our protocol of what we do is to look at these words and see if we can fit them into our uh, sentences, definitions. So going over these, again it's sort of a review of what we did. Two inequalities joined by the word and or the word or are called compound inequalities. A conjunction is a compound sentence formed using the word and. So this would be associated with an intersection, which is number three. The solution of a conjunction is the intersection of the solution set of the individual sentences. Now a disjunction is a compound sentence formed using the word or and again, it's associated with, as you see here, union of the set of individual sentences. So these two words have great meaning in mathematics. And, remember, is an intersection. And or is the union. And now we'll have some practical examples. And we'll talk over these before we actually do them. So here they want to find either intersection or union. So we have to look at the symbol. Well, the symbol indicates union. So in our answer set over here, we're going to include all of these numbers. Now in this case, the symbol is for intersection. So in our answer set, we're only going to include those letters that are found in both. And this is also intersection. Only those letters found in both. And here we are having a union with an empty set. So the only members would be these. So let's write those out. So some of the protocol involved is we usually then list them numerically in ascending order. So we'd start with the 2, the 3, the 8. Notice some are repeated. Then we have the 15 from here, then the 20 and 24. So C's not repeated, D's not there, E's not there. We have an F there and an F there. And what's left here is a G and a G. So the only two that are found in both sets are these. And the same then would apply here. Those that are found in both sets. And that's what intersection, that's what union, 
and here union with an empty set you just list all your elements. Now a little review when we have inequalities such as x is less than and we're going to graph it well we put it over the number we're interested in it would be a parenthesis and then the line would go to the left if x is greater than we have a parenthesis with the line going toward the right if it's x is less than or equal to instead of a parenthesis we use a bracket and the line goes to the left and for greater than it's a bracket the line goes to the right so here they're giving us a line so let's look at where negative 2 is well negative 2 is going to be right there and the number we're interested in is 5 so 1 2 3 4 5 it's right there now what are we going to put now we're reading x by the way so as we go x is greater or equal to it's going to be a bracket in a sense facing to the right and now x is less than or equal to 5 it will be a bracket going this way so then we put our line and we just darken this line basically so what it, what does this mean well these are the values of x and that since we have a bracket here the number negative 2 is included in the set as is your positive 5. Now to write this in interval notation we take it right from the graph it's negative 2 comma and it goes up to 5 bracket. Now this one is an OR so we're going to say t now is less than 0. So we're going to put a parenthesis facing to the left. t is less than 0. And we're going to darken that line and put our arrow there. Now the other number is t is greater than 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 is there and it's only greater so 5 is not included in the set so we use a parenthesis at 5 and it should be at 5 I went a little bit behind but that's okay for illustration now to write this in interval notation where is this coming from and we always go left to right it's coming from negative infinity going up to 0 but 0 is not included in the set and then it's going to be union with this part again parentheses since 5 is not included in the set and it's going to positive infinity so that's a good example showing you uh, this type and this type so this would be a conjunction and this would be a disjunction. I filled in a little bit of this. Here we have that y is greater than or equal to negative 2. So there's my negative 2. I'm going to use a bracket because negative 2 is part of the set and I extend this out and it's an OR. Now this is a negative Y is greater than or equal to 3. I don't want a negative Y. I want a positive Y. So I divide both sides by a negative 1 but in so doing I have to reverse the direction of my inequality sign. And then I get this. So now my negative 3 is included in the set and it goes to the left. So my interval notation would be it's coming from negative infinity up to negative 3, which is included in the set, so I use a bracket, and then union with a bracket negative 2 
up to positive infinity. Now here we have an end. So I thought we'd do this together. So there's my n. So this is an intersection. Now the numbers I'm interested, I put on my number line. And since it only goes up to 5, I made each point 2. So there's my negative 2. And let's write that. It says m is greater. So 2 is not in the set. And it's going to go this way. Now it says m is less than, reading it this way. Now you could rewrite that if it's more comfortable for you. m is less than or equal to 6. So here we're going to make a bracket at 6 and the line goes this way. Now since it's a union, I'm sorry, intersection, it's only that part where they overlap. Now, theoretically, this would go on this way and this would go on that way, but we only are interested in the part of intersection. So when we write this, we're going to say it's coming from negative 2, and negative 2 is not in the set. That's what the parenthesis means, and it goes up to 6, which is a bracket, and that is in the set. We're going to do the same thing with these other two. All right, looking at uh, number 14 now, we see the numbers we're interested in are a 5 and a 2. I've put them there. And it says x is less than 5, so it's a parenthesis going this way. And this is x is greater or equal to 2, so it's a bracket going this way. And it's only where they intersect because of the word they're telling us, and. And that would be interval notation. Now here we have union, and the numbers we're interested in is a negative 3 and a negative 1. I've written them down. So it says x is greater or equal to negative 3, so it's going to be a line like so. And then since it's an or, I'm also going to put this one in, which is a line. But what will we include in our interval notation? Well, in this case, since it's an or, we will start with our negative 3. Negative 3, comma, to positive infinity. Now, inf infinity always has a parenthesis. Now, notice here that if this were an end, we wouldn't count this part. The only part we would count is where they intersected. But this is an or, so that's correct. Now in solving this one, notice x isn't by itself. So how do we get x by itself? Well, we're going to add 5 there. But the key is you have to add the 5 to each of these. So now this becomes a positive 1 is less than or equal to x is less than 8. So 2, 4, 6, 8, this will be our 8, and our 1, our 1 here is right there. So we're going to put a bracket this way, and a parenthesis this way, and that's our solution set. So in interval notation, it's a bracket at 1, I should put the 1 there, comma 8, now, to keep the uh, tape a little shorter, instead of working everyone live, I will show the work and then uh, go over it with you. And again, if you're not sure of something, bring it into your instructor or to the fifth floor of the library, the tutoring center, to get help. Okay, here we have to do some calculation. I'm going to transpose the uh, positive 1 to the other side. It becomes a negative 3. Divide both sides by 3. And I get t is greater or equal to 1. And again, I think most of you may prefer to rewrite it. 
so that you read it from left to right, although you could read it from right to left as well. And here we're going to transpose the 5 becomes a 12, divide by 2. So our numbers are a negative 1 and a 6. And this says t is greater, so I'm using a parenthesis facing this way. And then 6 is included. And it's an n, so it's just where they overlap, right there. And our uh, interval notation will be, oh, let's get that correct here, a parenthesis. You can take it right from the graph. Negative uh, 1, comma, 6, bracket. And this one's interesting in that we need to solve and get rid of the fraction. So in a sense, we're multiplying each term by 4. Here the 4's will actually cancel out. So that leaves me with a 20, and then x plus 1, and this is a negative 12. Well, to make the x by itself, or to get it that way, I subtract 1. And notice this seems to be backwards. Generally, we want the negative on this side, so I've rewritten it. And watching how I place my inequality signs. So there's my 13, there's my 19. And this says it's greater or equal to, so the line will go this way. And this is uh, less than or equal to, so the line goes this way. And in these conjunctions, it's what's in the middle here. An interval notation will be in bracket negative 13 and 19 with a bracket. Again, I, I won't do every one because we're already up to 17 minutes. This is done the same way. We're going to add 7, then divide by 5, and do a similar thing. All right, in number 20, it's a little tricky because it's in function notation. Now, keep in mind we could substitute a y here. And then there we're saying, why is this? So this value goes there. And then they could have written it that way, but they wanted you to practice function notation. So I'm going to subtract 8 to get the negative 3x by itself. And then now I'm going to divide everything by a negative 3x. Now when I do that, an interesting thing happens. These signs reverse because we're dividing by a negative. And eventually I put it in this order. And there's my uh, 8 thirds is almost a 3 there. And there's where the 6 is. So this one, by the way, also has a line there. So this will be a bracket. This will be a parenthesis. An interval notation will be parenthesis 8 thirds, comma 6, bracket. For number 21, just to give you a little thumbs up, here is the function of x is this. The f or, uh, again, this is union. The function of x is this. Well, here's what x is. So you put this there and this there. I'll write it out for you. So again, this replaces this function symbol. And this is replaced by that. And then it's pretty general. So here, again, I would probably move the negative x over so I wouldn't have to reverse the sign. Move the 1 over, a negative 1, that becomes a 4. Again, I'd move that over to keep it the x positive so I wouldn't have to reverse the inequality sign. And again, this is also union. And the tape is getting close to 20 minutes. All right, now going on to something new. We want to find the domain. And these are all in function notation. And to find the domain of something when x is in the denominator, 
we want to find those values of x that make the denominator a zero. So we just equal the denominators to a zero. Uh, in, in the case of 24 and 25. So here we know that if we solve this, x equals 5. And if we solve this one, x equals, just bring this over, becomes a negative 6. So this is a negative 3. Now, to then define the domain in interval notation, uh, let me write that out for you. So if I were to put this, x is any real number, but x cannot be a 5, because that would make our denominator a 0. So if we graphed it, it would be any real number, except 5 is not in the set. So to put this in interval notation, we start from negative infinity up to 5, put a parenthesis to indicate that 5 is not included, and then union symbol, then start at the other side of 5 up to positive infinity. And it's the same for 3. Now for number 26, here we can't have under the radical sign a number that is less than 0. So we are going to say that uh, this radicand equals 0. So then we solve. All right, going on to number 26. Here we can't have a number larger, or I should say smaller than zero. So it has to be greater or equal to zero. So I get this when I solve that. When I plot this on my number line, I get this, and putting it into interval notation. So it's that x has to be equal to this x is greater or equal to this. Now this one's a little tricky because the x is in a term that is negative. So again, we're solving it for 0. I'm going to transpose the negative 3 over to this side, make it a positive 3. Divide both sides by 3. I get, let me write it this way, x is less than or equal to 5. Now notice it's less than. So as we start going down here, we get negative numbers. But watch if we put into our system a 6 here. If x is 6, or any number greater than 5, uh, negative 3 times 6 is a negative 18. So under the radical here, you'd have a negative. Because multiplying any number by any positive number value for x that is greater than 5, it makes our radicand here a negative number. That's why it goes to the left. And that is this uh, result. And in these last two, we're dealing with the domain of the sum of these functions. And when we solve for this, we get x is greater or equal to negative 4. This one, x is greater or equal to a negative 1 half. And where they intersect is from the 1 half, negative 1 half. So that would be the interval notation for that domain. And then here where we're subtracting, it's a conjunction. It's what's between them. This one is 1 half, and this one is 8. And this is the interval notation. Again, I'm not sure how much they're going to cover in the course. Uh, this is generally the description of what's here. And I've kept it under 25 minutes. I probably could have gone on for an hour. But again, if you're not sure of something, depending on your homework, uh, ask your teacher go to the uh, Learning Center, but find out what's needed so that you will do well on your test.